Hey guys, in this video today, I'm gonna to show you how you can create credibility out of thin air in any business or any job application or resume. One of the biggest reasons that I see that people never even start on chasing their dreams is that they think that they don't have credibility. They think that they need more credibility in order to be able to start the business they want or to get the remote job they want. Now, my name is Chris Shoup, and I created this channel to help people find more freedom in their lives. I help people to be free physically, to be free financially, to be free mentally, and to be free spiritually. So if you're someone who likes freedom and would like more of it in your life, then you've come to the right place. Now, if you're the kind of person who's interested in my channel, that's because you're trying to do something with your life. You're trying to get to a better place than where you are right now. And so that may be trying to start a business, maybe trying to make it as a freelancer, maybe trying to get a remote job. Whatever it is that you're trying to do, chances are credibility pay plays a big part in that. And it may be that that perceived lack of credibility is what's holding you back from getting to that better place in your life. So maybe you, you feel uncomfortable applying for a job because you don't have a college degree or you don't have the right college degree. Or maybe you don't have enough experience or you don't have the right experience. Or maybe you like to start a business and you don't have any experience or you don't have a certification or something. And you feel like, why would anybody ever hire me? Or why would anybody ever want to be my client? Because I don't have the degree, I don't have the experience, I don't have the certifications, I don't have the, the title, whatever it may be. So if you're in that situation, I'm gonna give you some great ways that you can build that credibility, but the first thing is to recognize that credibility is just a psychological construct. Right, credibility only exists in people's minds. It's not something real, it's not something tangible. And very often, it's really not anywhere near as important as we think it is. So for example, uh, I run a coaching program where I get people remote jobs in 90 days. And so I don't have an HR background, right? I don't have experience as a recruiter. I don't have any formal certification uh, saying that I'm a job coach. I don't have any degree in career coaching, right? But, but people don't really care, right? They care that I know what I'm talking about and I can help them. Those are the things that they care about. The same way as if you go to a mechanic, right? Do you, do you go to a mechanic and let's say you take your car in and the mechanic says, okay, well, you need to change your valve cover gasket. It's gonna cost $300. I can get it done by the end of the day. Do you then turn around to the mechanic and say, oh, well, uh, let me see where you went to mechanic school. Right? Let me see your certifications and your diplomas and, and show me your last five years of work history. Right? You're never gonna say that. Nobody cares. You care that the person is able to solve your problem. That's the only thing that you care about. And so chances are whatever goal you're trying to pursue or whatever goal you're afraid to start trying to pursue, the credibility aspect is not as important as you think it is. And so that's the first point to keep in mind. If you have the ability to do something, if you have the ability to help someone, you are competent and knowledgeable, then you're, you don't need permission, right? Because all of these things that, that we talked about, the degree and the title, et cetera, they all kind of add up to somebody else's giving you permission to go put yourself out there, to go offer your service. You don't need anyone else's permission. Right? You don't need a, a college institution to hand you a piece of paper that says that you're qualified to do this. And yeah, sometimes you're required by law. I, I mean that as an exception, right? You can't, you can't go practice medicine without a license, etc. But for everything else, you do not need someone else's permission to do it. You can really, you establish your own credibility. You create your own credibility. And so I'm going to tell you a bunch of ways that you can do that. Now, the number one way to build your own credibility is just to be competent. Right, just to be able to do whatever it is that you are selling, just to be able to help the people that you are serving, right? And if you if you're not that skilled yet, uh, you can get there, right? Just just go learn more, just go study more, just go practice more. If you have that competence, then that's going to show through when you have when you have conversations with prospective clients and you're able to diagnose their problem and say, "Here's what I can do for you," right? It's going to be pretty obvious that you know what you're talking about or you don't know what you're talking about. And the same thing is true with any kind of content marketing like a blog or a YouTube channel. Like if you were watching me right now and I was just blabbing about nothing and I clearly had no idea what I was talking about, I, I would not have very much credibility. But 
If you judge that I do know what I'm talking about and that I do sound competent, then that raises my credibility massively. The same thing is true at a job interview. If you say that you have a particular computer skill, for example, and then the interviewer asks you some questions about that computer skill or asks you what you've done with it in the past, you're going to have to have that competence in order to be able to answer those questions well, and it's going to be pretty clear whether or not you have that competence. So that's the number one thing by far to create your credibility is to have that competence in the first place. Now, one little caveat I want to mention to that is that a lot of people suffer from something called imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome is where you think that you're never good enough. And so you have to be a little bit objective about uh, assessing your own competence at a, at a certain thing because you're never going to be 100% competent at anything, generally speaking, right? There's always somebody better than you. There's always something else that you could learn. So you have to realistically assess how good you are and be, be careful that you aren't myopically focused on only the things that you can't do. So that could be a whole rant of its own, but the competence is super important, but don't be too harsh on yourself. Second thing you can do is create a company. If you are the owner of a company doing a certain thing, do you think that that gives you more credibility in doing that thing? Well, of course it does. What do you need to do to create a company? You have to create a name. That's it. You have to come up with a name. That, that's all you have to do. This is something that, that I talk about a lot with my remote job students, is that they'll be learning some new skill and they'll have this new competency, but they don't really have any experience. And they say, okay, well, how am I going to get hired if I don't have any experience? And I say, that's easy. Just create a company. Let's say that you work for a mechanic shop now. Uh, you're a mechanic and you want to be a graphic designer. Well, you go learn the Photoshop or whatever skills you need in order to be a graphic designer. You practice it a little bit and then go make some logos for people. Go to the restaurant across the street and, and, uh, Get and make a logo for them for free and, and send, them, send them an email saying, hey, I made this logo for you. You're welcome to use it. Uh, give me a call if I can help you with anything else, right? And then you say on your resume, you write your current employment as Advantage Graphic Design, right? I just pulled a name off the top of my head. Create a name and you have a company. You can write it on your resume and then under your experience for the company, you could say, created logos for local businesses using Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator and whatever else you used. See, instant credibility. You've set up a business for yourself just by putting a name on it. That's it. And if you're a freelancer, you can do the same thing. Uh, put, put a name on your freelance business, make yourself advantage graphic design, and then create a few logos, send them out to people for free. All of a sudden, now you have a portfolio and you have a list of clients that you've worked for in the past. You see how stupid easy that was. And if you want to build your credibility of your company further, then uh, create a logo for it. You know, go on Fiverr, get somebody to make a logo for $5. And then, you know, maybe make a website. If you, if you really want to go all the way, go get it registered as an LLC. There's nothing preventing you from doing these things, thereby creating that credibility for yourself. You don't need anybody else's permission. Another thing you can do, aside from uh, creating a company, which is just a name, right, is that you can work for a company. You can work for a company and that gives you credibility. That gives you that company's credibility. So go back to my example of the, uh, of the mechanic who learns graphic design. Well, one thing that he could do is, let's say he's been working in the mechanic shop for five years. Well, he could create a logo for the mechanic shop. And so now all of a sudden on his resume, he has the, you know, ABC mechanic shop, worked for five years, as mechanic and graphic designer. And then under the, the experience section about what you did for the company, you know, maybe mention one line about the mechanic stuff and make the whole rest about the graphic design stuff. So you're creating your credibility out of thin air. And you don't even have to be working for the company. I mean, I work right across the street from a, from a Chipotle. I could waltz down to Chipotle, stick a logo on the desk to the people that are serving my, my burrito, and say, hey, have this logo. And now all of a sudden, I get to put on my resume that I designed a logo for Chipotle. This stuff is so easy once you get out of that box of thinking that you need somebody else's permission to have credibility. Here's something you can do that's huge for creating credibility. Write a book. If you know about a topic, 
You can write a book about it. You know, the word, the word authority, the, the root of the word authority is the word author. If you were an author, then you were an authority. If you were the person who wrote the book on something, that makes you an expert on that topic. Nowadays, you can write a book and you can self-publish on Amazon. Uh, I've done it a couple of times. You can do the same thing. If you know about something, if you know enough about a topic in order to write a book about it, then write a book about it. And then there you go, you're an instant authority. You are the person who wrote the book on the topic, literally speaking. And then a similar thing you can do is start a YouTube channel. Just by the fact that you're willing to talk on video and, and talk about your knowledge about a certain thing gives you credibility. Most people are never going to do that in their entire lives. They are never going to record a video of them talking about something and just put it out there for the whole world to see. It's something that's very scary, frankly, for a lot of people, myself included, right? I, it, was, it was very difficult for me in the beginning. So if you're somebody who is capable of doing that, just the fact that you're the guy that's talking on the video gives you a huge amount of credibility. And you don't need any sort of special qualification to do it. I mean, you don't need to have a degree in video creation. I mean, all you really need is a smartphone and an internet connection. And then you can record videos and upload them to YouTube. That is all that you need. And then the last thing that you can do to build credibility, and this is actually a lot bigger than most of the other ones, better than writing a book, better than, than having a YouTube channel, is just to speak with confidence. Right? If you can speak with confidence and authority on a particular topic, then if you can demonstrate that you recognize yourself as, as somebody who is worth listening to, then other people will be much more likely to listen to you. And in fact, in, in my business as an Excel consultant, I have a business, for those who don't know, uh, where I create fancy spreadsheets for companies. And in that business, almost nobody ever asks me for any kind of proof. Right? Nobody asks me like who, what projects I've done in the past. Nobody asks me what my certifications are, anything like that. Nobody asks because I speak with confidence. And generally, if you have confidence in yourself, then other people will have confidence in you. So I hope I'm getting the point across here that if you want to build credibility, you, it's entirely within your own power to do it. There are so many ways at your disposal that you can build your own credibility without having to get permission from anybody. And I want to send you off with a little homework assignment. Don't worry, it's a fun one. The homework assignment is to watch a movie called Catch Me If You Can. It's an old movie with Leonardo DiCaprio when he was young. If you've already seen the movie, then go watch it again. And when you're watching this movie, I want you to notice how the main character manufactures his own authority, manufactures his own credibility in every situation. And, you know, if you've seen the movie, you know this guy is a criminal that's, you know, goes around impersonating, impersonating all sorts of characters and, and committing crimes all over the place. And so I, I'm not trying to, trying to uh, tell you that you should go committing criminal actions. But even then, you know, even then at the, towards the end of the movie, the guy, well, I'm gonna ruin it a little bit, but the, uh, the guy gets caught and he ends up getting a cushy job with the, with the FBI instead of going to jail. So basically the moral of the story is that if you're competent and you're willing to assert yourself, everything's gonna turn out pretty well for you in the end, even if you're a criminal. Although I, again, don't recommend that you become a criminal. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please do me a quick favor, hit the thumbs up because it makes the YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you'll be the first to get all my new content. Share this video, leave me a comment if you thought it was good, and I think you'd also really like this video where I show you how you can start a $100 per hour freelance business from scratch.